I always wanted to make an entrance in Miami. What we have here is the Lexus LC500. And let me just talk to you right off the bat. I know what you're thinking. I haven't gone completely off the rails. I haven't forsaken yachts in exchange for cars. But right now, we're getting ready for a very exciting project. We're gonna be testing the new Lexus LY650. That's right, if you've been living under a rock or you're not caught up with all your issues of power motor yacht, you might not be aware, but Lexus is making a very serious effort to get into the yacht segment. They've actually partnered with Marquis Larson, builder of Marquis and Carver Yachts, to create this new one-of-a-kind production brand. Now, this is something we've seen before, automakers trying to get into the yacht segment. It goes back as far as the 90s when Riva teamed up with Ferrari to build a yacht. And in more recent years, we've seen projects from Bugatti and Aston Martin kind of come and go. But Lexus is really diving in with both feet in this unique partnership. And to better understand what Lexus can bring to the yacht market, we really need to get an understanding of their cars and what the company ethos is as a whole. We needed a proper car tester, which is why we tapped Pat Devereux to come in and show us what he looks for in a car test and what, what Lexus is going to be able to bring to the table here. Pat, thanks for coming out today. Good to see you. It's nice to have you here. Good so, to see you. So, Pat, I hear you're something of a car test expert. Well, I wouldn't call myself an expert, but other people might. Oh, okay. All right. So, over that over that stretch of time, how long have you been testing cars? Well, well over 30 years on uh, wow. four different continents all over the world. Unbelievable. So, in that amount of time, how many cars do you, do you think you've tested? Are we in the hundreds? Great question. Um, I think it's probably in the thousands now. Thousands of cars. For sure. Well, you have, a, you have a few more tests on me, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what this car and Lexus has to offer. Should we take it for a spin? Show, sure. me, show me your world. Let's go. So let's say you're testing the, the LC500 for the magazine. What's, what's one of the first things you look for is like, what's that first, first impression? Okay, so what you do is you have to, again, to be, there is a bit of science to it. I mean, again, there is, do you like it, do you not like it? But actually, there's actually quite a science to it because there has to be, because you have to approach these things. Sometimes you only have 15 minutes to test a car. So you have to go, right, I've got to find out exactly what I need to know about this car in 15 minutes. How do you do that? If you, right. approach, if you just sort of came in a scattergun approach, you wouldn't be able to do it. So mm -hmm. there are certain things you look for straight away. There are things like, I mean, you can start off with everything called NVH, which is no, uh, noise, vibration, and harshness. Okay. Um, again, so it's just how does the car feel when you first get in? Is there a lot of noise? Mm -hmm. Are you feeling it? You know, what, can you see everything? Um, does the suspension sound, you know, very noisy? Is it very right. peaceful? How does it go down the road? Then you look at the steering, what the steering inputs, you know, when you, is it very faithful when you turn the wheel? Does it turn the wheel? Or does it, does it understeer terribly? Does it oversteer? Does the back end come out? Um, again, in what conditions does it do that? Um, do the, all the controls, when you use them, do they respond properly? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are you looking for? This is like, you know, when I get on the indicator, yep, it's all there. The pedals, the throttle response is very important. Um, vision is a big thing. Obviously, we're sitting here, can you see around the car? Can you be aware of everything around the car? Some cars have zero rear vision. I mean, because that's just not their thing. Right, you know, right. Like some sports cars just don't have any at all. Mm -hmm. Whereas others, you'll be in a big SUV and they'll be very high and you can see perfectly around you. Where there's a certain level that you expect. Right. And you want to see what can you see in the car, what can you not see. The thing is, what would you reasonably expect of this car? Right. And otherwise, and then you have a competitive set. Mm -hmm. Thinking, well, you know, for the sake of argument, a. Um, a BMW or a Mercedes, you know, yeah. of a similar type. You know, what do their cars do? Right. Now, it's I really the more I hear you talk about what you look for, it's really a lot of crossover to what we look for in the boat market. Everything from the sight lines. I mean, crucially important, especially if you're navigating waters, just like cars. You got boats crossing all around you. I tell you what, Pat, it's been really interesting watching you test this car. I've always been a little bit more of a hands-on learner, though. Do you, you mind if I take it for a spin? Oh, no, I think that's a great idea. Uh, that, that sounds like a plan. Buzzkill, but it's a 
Yeah, so as you can see, an interesting turn of speed, right? You wouldn't have expected that initially, right? No, and it's, it's what I always find, it's amazing when you're a good luxury car or a luxury yacht, when, when all of a sudden you're up to speeds and you're like, man, how am I going 40 knots? I thought I was going 20, or how did I almost get to 100? I thought I was going 50. I mean, that's always the sign of a good ride. You don't have police on the seat? Uh, yeah, not, you know, I plead the fifth. <laughs> Also, I'll point out that there's there's different modes you can use uh, for the car, which basically change the very nature of the car. Okay. If you turn this dial, I'm currently in normal, normal, and you turn it up, that's uh, sport there. Sport Plus, you can hear the engine. Wow, the yeah. Engine chain, right? The car becomes far more alert, more aggressive. You can some fun with that Sport Plus mode. That's right. Bring it back to normal for now. But again, that's that's a that's an amazing thing to have, right? You've got a car that one minute's a cruising car, the other minute you can turn it into a sort of five, you know, near 500 horsepower Japanese rear drive muscle mm -hmm. car. Actually, saying similarly to uh, to a yacht when. You want you want a boat that you be able to bring back to you know 12, 14 knots, which you know um, 15 miles an hour, and one that you'll get the fuel efficiency because that's really important with I mean especially on a boat when you have massive fuel capacity and, and the costs associated. But so you want to be able to have the option of go longer distances, comfortable but on plane, but at the same time you you find yourself in a squall or time constraints like many of us have. You want the ability to get home in a hurry. Well, having a, having a good experience testing this car so far, but I'm gonna be honest, Pat, I'm starting to get the itch to get out on the water. It's looking like a beautiful day out there. Mind if I show you a piece of my world? It's about time. All right, let's do it. Well, welcome aboard, Pat. Well, nice to be here. Welcome to the, to the world of yachts. Yeah, and a uh, nice world it seems to be. It, so, it's yeah. so far so good. It's yeah. really amazing that we, the, the, we've been aboard for about 40, 50 seconds. You can already see the Lexus touches in the design here. Whether it's the, the leather leather headliner here and, and the stitching or, or just the way the, the seating here, it, it feels auto-inspired and, and feels a lot like the Lexus we were in this morning. No, the quality is definitely there, isn't it? It feels very similar quality to the LC500. So what's going on over here? Well, this looks like an area that people would be spending a lot of time if, if I had to guess. You know, this, is, this is kind of a trend we're seeing where you have the aft galley and the grill station that'll service people whether you're eating forward at the table or you're entertaining guests in the in the cockpit here you never really want to leave the light leave the party you don't want to be subjugated to go down below and, and cook a meal if your friends are over here or swimming off the hydraulic platform so really well you yeah, got nice grill space and and sink space to work here a couple, a couple of refrigerators here All right. What's also really nice, oh, those doors fully open. You get this huge amount of counter space to, to prep your meals. And is this unusual? Hopefully someone will lend you a hand. No, you know, I mean, that's definitely a trend is, is wide open. And I think this boat does it exceptionally well, especially with the size of these forward windshields we're looking at. And those, those are probably the biggest forward windshields I've seen on a boat in this size category. Right. Going into the salon, anything, anything jump out at you? The height, the height is uh, extraordinary. I mean, I was expecting it to be much lower than this. Yeah. And also the breadth. It's. Is this wide? It is yeah. wide, right? No, very, very beamy. But I think that's enhanced also by the size of these windows here. Really, a lot of people say call it the floor to ceiling, but and it's pretty darn close, especially the light flooding in from the, the forward windshield. These days, everyone's aspiring to have that open, that open boat, and this, this single level here makes it feel a lot bigger. Yeah. I'm seeing an awful lot of these, you know, the materials are very similar to the car, the, the finish and the workmanship, the craftsmanship, these low angle curves. I mean, that's got to be a good thing to have on a boat when you're rocking around, isn't it? No, you know, it's, it's such a good point because not only does it give it that automotive feel and makes it a beautiful design, but it's, it's super functional. So now imagine you got your family and maybe you spend a lot of time at sea, but now all of a sudden you have your parents or, or kids aboard, they're running around in the sea. You don't want them banging into any sharp corners. And I would challenge anybody to find a hard edge on this boat. I'm, I'm gonna keep looking, see if I find one. But Me too. But I don't I don't think I will. You know, it's, and it, to me, it's also what you pointed out, it's the mix of all, all these different materials. It's, yeah, well, you've got, you've got some ultra suede, well, you've got some, some nice soft 
material here. This is far more hard wearing here. It's, it's functional as well. That's the thing. Right, it's not right. a lot of these things you see them just covered in the same stuff. Right. They're going to wear at different rates, and that wouldn't be cool. Right. Right. You want to have something here. This this needs to be harder wearing than this. If someone's going to sit on that in a wet suit or something like that, or yeah, a wet, yeah. wet bathing suit. Yep. I think that's cool. I think these logos are pretty cool, actually. I mean, again, you, you know, know I, you I, don't forget where you are, do you? I wouldn't have. Uh, I wouldn't have known that at first, but no, the Lexus logo is. Uh, so we got one here, and we got one on the table there. I see. I could see somebody else trying to do this, and it would come off as too marketing. But honestly, it's 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 a nice touch, I think. I mean, it, it yeah. Works. I mean, you have to point it out. It's not necessarily sort of uh, gabbing you in thing. the eye. That's what you want. I think this is where the fun's going to be, Pat. All right, look at this. Wow, what's going on here then? It's starting to feel a little familiar though to some of the things we were talking about this morning. Very, very clean helm. Really not that many switches, some carbon fiber touches. And I swear they just stole this wheel off, off the car we had this morning. Similar, but it hasn't got the 10 to 2 indents so, that you, so you're yeah, holding it properly. What is the correct way to hold a wheel on a boat? You know, I, a lot of people like to use their toes. Do they? That's uh, that, that's a common that's a common <laughs> one among, among our staff. But not on a boat like this. Pro of course, a, a nice ten and two. Ten and two. Okay. Then you put the autopilot on and right. you sit back and wait for Brimini to arrive. So what are we looking at here? So this is the the Garmin glass helm is a, a trend we're seeing. It, again, just going for that really clean look. And look at these three screens, you'd think, oh, maybe that's a little redundant, but actually the setup, ironically, that we have right here is perfect. So right in center line, without, you don't have to look too far. When you look at the horizon, you look right down to the chart, you'll see where you're at. And then with, thanks to the C-Zone switching, you can control all your boat systems right right within right within easy reach. And it's really easy to see. You got your engine room exhaust, turn the blowers on, your battery access is all there. And over here, you got your, your really important engine instrumentation and an app facing camera so you can even though like i gotta say visibility is pretty good going back it's always nice to have that camera so you can see exactly what that swim platform is not necessarily when we're leaving but if we're coming back in and do you have cameras all the way around the boat or just at the back i believe this one just has the aft camera but you always have the option to add a few more right and one thing that's nice we were talking about how in the, the car this morning everything was with, with, within easy reach everything's right within easy reach Nice ventilation here. Very smart now. No hard, no hard edges yet. I'm going to continue looking. Okay, well, let's go keep looking. I'm going to find one. Cool. So again, just interesting use of materials all throughout the boat. I mean, but we, somehow, spookily, it all fits together, doesn't it? it you does. think with this many different materials, it would just look like a mess, but actually, it looks fantastic. The way they integrate it. Really yeah, nice. that's that's it. Now this this is somewhat exceptional, I would say. I mean, uh, I've just finished remodeling my house, and I have this coffee machine in my house. Never oh, mind, is that right? Never mind on my boat. Oh, it looks like a nice one. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is top of the range. So that describes a very interesting lifestyle to me. Right. I'm a right. huge coffee fan, of course. But what have we got in here? Just a cupboard. Yeah, plenty, plenty of storage there. Wow. Well, I gotta say, you know. I thought the placement was a, was a little strange at first when I noticed you get the the living accommodations down here and you're coming up to the salon. It's kind of in this in a weird use of space, but then I got to thinking, it's actually not that strange at all because when I, want, I wake up in the morning and I definitely want to get a cup of coffee before I see the outside world, or more importantly, the outside world sees me. So you can kind of scurry up here, get a quick drink, and uh, get ready for the day. Or in fact, a glass of wine, maybe. We got a little, is that a wine fridge? Oh, that's for a different start to the day then. That, you know, depends on if you're at your destination already or not. But it's nice to have options. Good, let's head in there. Let's check out the master. Wow. The, the headroom continues, huh? Wow. Yeah, wow, wow is right. Really good use of space with the Athor chips. Is this normal that it would be lateral like this, or would they normally some, be? Some builders will incorporate it. Most often when you have a full beam mast like this, you're going to have the bed facing, you know, the line vertically, of exactly. But right. it's really nice use of space. Again, but I'm just looking at the size of these windows. Imagine, it was, look how bright it is and how much you'd see the water. But now imagine you're at Anchorage, you're in the Bahamas, oh. you've got some scenery. That, that's, that's really what you want to wake up to. I mean, I always think about going, you know, going below on a boat. It always feels very claustrophobic, mm -hmm. and this still feels feels very light and airy. And well, again, we've got the ceiling height still. Right, right. So it's still, what, 6'4"? Yeah. Must, must be easy. Yep. Again, the materials are there. Love it. No, uh, 
no hard corners yet. And it, yeah, exactly. I the craftsmanship is beyond. That's right. So this was done by an Italian company, the craftsmanship. That's right. So it, it really, you had a good line before about worlds colliding. So you had influences from Japan, obviously, and the Lexus design team, both in the Wisconsin-based Marquis Larson group. But the interior styling by Nuvolarni and Leonard is really... It's the dream team. It's, it's world class. It's right. amazing how you get all those different cultures to work together. I would very rarely say I'd like to sit in on a meeting, but I would like to see how those guys all interact. It must be pretty interesting. Well, the end product's pretty good, isn't it? So they, whatever they, they must, said, it works. They must work together well. Yeah. Should we go up top, check out the flybridge? Let's do it. Spiral stairs sometimes make me nervous on a boat underway, but these stairs really have a nice size, so you fit your whole foot on each step. Kind of gives you confidence underway. Super solid. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't feel any problem with those at all. So what do we got here then? So I mean, this, this is a nice size flybridge for for a boat of this size. A lot of different seating arrangements and. What do you know? I still haven't found my hard edge yet. This is, uh, I, think I, I, might, I think I might strike out here. I don't think there are any. No, that, that's, prob that's probably a pretty safe bet, but I think, think this is the place you'd, you'd want to be. This, if I wasn't driving, this, I think this would be my seat right here. I think when the weather's like this, bridge, yeah. A cold drink, the horizon ahead. Something feels right about this. Yeah. No. That feels right. It's all good. Absolutely. So I understand there's a coupe version of this boat as well, without this flybridge. Now I'm led to understand there is a, a coupe in the design stage, and to me what that means is that Lexus is really serious about building a legitimate production brand. You know, a lot of these other companies we talked about before have a one-off or, you know, they test the wars with a boat and see how the, the company reacts. They're already designing their second and third boat into the lineup, which means they're building, they're not going anywhere. They're diving in and intending to stay in this game. So you think it's gonna work? I, I, there's only one way to find out, Pat. I think we tested the car, we walked to the boat. I think it's time to really show you what boat testing is all about. Should we take it out? Absolutely. All right, let's do it. Good. All right, Pat, so time to give you a taste of, uh, of what it takes to be a boat tester. No doubt you'll enjoy it. So one of the first things we're gonna do is kind of getting our, our chart ready here. We're gonna measure speed, RPM, gallons per hour, and then decibels right here on uh, on the app. But what, what I'm gonna ask you to do is I'm actually gonna read out some of these some of these readings, and I'm gonna ask if uh, if you don't if you don't mind, John, sure. for me. Sure. Can I ask you what your expectations are for any of these? Or do you, do you have any idea what these would be? Or? Well, I tell you what, this is definitely gonna be, you know, I've never even tested a marquee, so this is a pretty blank sheet of paper, actually. So I'm very interested to see. I have a feeling it's gonna be on the quiet side just by getting a sense of the boat as we, as we idled out and, and things like that. But um, I'm told it's an efficient boat and only, only the test will really tell. So it's a good question, though. thing we want to do is we want to do two-way averages because a lot of time in a place like this you might get three or four knots of current and then you're getting a, a really a top speed that's that's not fair and you're gonna be the disappointed owners or disappointed builders depending on which way you look at it so what are you looking for right now you're trying to go into the wind first time or okay? now you know what actually it doesn't matter which direction you start out with as long as you're canceling out by coming back in the exact same direction I see. so really we got a nice piece of of real estate open open water ahead and this is enough space that we're gonna need to get up to full full speed. Thank you. Well, now, what stood out to you? Anything, anything surprising? Anything you expected? I mean, the GPH is quite alarming. I have to tell you. I mean, 100 gallons per hour. That's uh, that's that's a lot. No, you're, you're you're absolutely right. But I mean, the, the truth is, it's nice to have good turn speed. 
I think most people are not going to be running your boat at, at wide open throttle. It's kind of like your car. I mean, what's, what's the fuel burn and your pedal all the way to the metal? It's, it's nice to have. I know I've seen a couple of your videos. I know I know you can push your car to a, to a spring, but realistically, you're in traffic or you're, you're looking to get a more comfortable cruise. You got the family around, people you're keeping an eye on. So it's a little, a little similar in that regard. Yeah, I think we need to measure the sound level in the car. We should have done that. I, you know what? There's, uh, there's always, it's always time for another test. We should do that. Definitely. I'm interested to know what the difference is now. Yeah. So I've tested the Lexus car, I've tested the Lexus yacht, and now it's time for the big question. Will Lexus be able to do what so many other automakers have tried and failed to do? Enter the yacht segment. Now I think if they came to the US with some out of the box concept, trying to do it all themselves, they likely would have failed. What's gonna help them stand apart and really stand the shot is the partnerships they established. Tapping New Villarney and Leonard, for example, gives it really nice Italian styling. And tapping Marquis Larson Group to build the boat and form the foundation of this new line, again, will give it a lot of legitimacy, especially in the US. My prediction, you're gonna see a lot more from Lexus yachts in the years to come. But you want to stay tuned for my full report and an upcoming issue of Power Motor Yacht or at pmymag.com. And until next time, I'll see you on the water or maybe the road. Who knows? See you out there.